Thank you, Bell Choir. What a wonderful way to ground us and prepare us for worship as we begin a new week and we welcome God's presence in the gift of this time together. Wonderful to see you and to be together. Thank you to those in care centers and other places that are joining us later on video too. We're glad that you can worship with us. We'll begin today with the sung grounding moment, build a longer table. If you want to use the All Creation Sings, the new supplement, it's 1062, and it's that new blue book that's just underneath the pew. I invite you to stand as you're able as we give thanks for the gift of baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter, and our joy. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you, through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Alleluia. I invite you to join in our opening song, I Love to Tell the Story.
Let us greet one another and invite you to stretch a little bit as we come with all of who we are today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. We'll join in the prayer of the day. Holy Lord, within your church, your followers have often allowed their disagreements to get in the way of being faithful to your word. Remove any barriers our communities face that prevent us from sharing your word and building up your church. Nourish our life in Christ's resurrection that we may know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for the bell choirs sharing this beautiful piece. Thank you, Bell Choir, for that lively, joyful, joyful song. The psalm for the day is Psalm 22. Please join me in the bold verses. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of the nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. A reading from Acts. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. Then he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome, 
Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. The trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks that Jesus was the Messiah, the Word of God. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united, united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that Stephanus, so that none of you can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ may not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of God. Thanks be to God. gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Kids, I invite you to come up and we're going to gather around the font today. Good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. So in our reading today, Paul is talking about baptism and wanting the people to remember that they're all one body, one family in Christ Jesus. And he says, you're not baptized in the name of Paul, you're not baptized in the name of Apollo, or anybody else that was their leader at that time that maybe baptized them. So I'm wondering, whose name were you baptized in? Our confirmation kids, we talked about this on Wednesday. Are there, there's a few of them out there. Whose name are we baptized in? 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, we become part of who God is. God's known to us in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So I found in our new um, All Creation Sings this wonderful Thanksgiving for baptism. So we're going to share this together. It's a repeat. So I say a line, and then you say it back. And maybe some of the grown-ups would like to say it too. And then we're going to do something special with the water at the end. So if you'd like to come, and we'll make a circle, a big circle around the font, so you can be near the special bowl here. What do you see on the bowl? Doves. Yeah, doves. A reminder of the Holy Spirit, because a dove came down upon Jesus when he was baptized. Yeah, that's special too, isn't it? We heard Jesus say he's the vine, and we are all the branches. This is a reminder that we're connected to Jesus. Okay, are we ready to do the repeat after me prayer? Okay. We praise you, O God, for water. We need water to drink. We need water to wash. We need water to grow. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for baptism. We praise you, O God, for your spirit. Okay, now I want you to put your hand here and see if we can all get a little bit of splash of water on our hands. Okay. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. Good. Are your fingertips getting wet? They should be. Good. And your whole hand is getting wet. Can we say amen with water? You can remember your baptism by making the sign of the cross on your forehead. Can you do that? And make your forehead a little bit wet and remember that you have been baptized. Okay. Now we're going to do another repeat prayer. We are the church. We are the church. We are your people. We are your people. We are your wonders. We are your wonders. We are your children. We learn in faith. We learn, in faith. We learn through love. We learn, through love. We, learn we learn of you. We learn in Jesus. Open our hearts. Open our minds. Open our community. Open our community. You, all that you are. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of the baptismal remembrance. And the acolytes have a bulletin for you to draw on and look at. And we'll find the candy bag. Yeah. Too many choices. All right, did you get one? You don't like butterscotch. Grab one. Okay. Beloved of God's heart, grace and peace from Jesus Christ. I'll give you a moment to look at that saying from John Howard Yoder, Mennonite author. 
power, politics, and personalities. The world is full of such interesting dynamics. <laughs> and the church, too, knows the struggles of such things. The power that we are to yield, though, is the power of love. Giving, serving, blessing. The politics that we adhere to are the politics of grace, forgiving, supporting, empowering. And personalities? What personality did Jesus have? God has made us, as we are, introverted, extroverted, somewhere in between. God knows how we are wired. Sometimes our journey of faith is quite easy, almost simple. And other times, Doubts flood our hearts, questions fill our minds. Sometimes we seek God, the wisdom, truth, and peace of God, and seem to have a hard time finding wisdom, truth, and peace. Sometimes grace seems elusive, even impossible. Experiences mold us as time goes by. Interactions with others press all sorts of buttons. And so the church, the body of Christ, this gathering and sending of the faithful has a dynamic all of its own. Jesus laughed. He cried. Jesus was gentle. He was firm. At times, Jesus needed to be alone for prayer and reflection. Other times, he was the life of the party, the center of attention. And so we, Christ's church, Christ's body, are all these things and more. We are all different and yet similar. People, just people, seeking community and fellowship, togetherness. May we be one as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. May we be equal, as God has made us all the same value. May we become what God would have us to be, supporters of one another, sharing each burden, encouraging one another, cheering each other on, building each other up, finding the best in one another. Last week, we read of the uproar in Thessalonica as Paul and Silas shared the wisdom and truth and peace of Jesus, explaining from the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah, the crucified and risen one. We heard that a great many devout Greeks and many leading women joined the way. The synagogue leaders became jealous, Luke tells us, and enlisted some ruffians to form a mob. The accusation made as these believers were dragged before the authorities is that they are turning the world upside down. Isn't that a, a wonderful phrase? Turning the world upside down. They're saying that there is another king, Jesus. There was such a commotion that the believers feared for the lives of Paul and Silas and Timothy, and so they separated them, sending Paul to Athens. The theme for this year's ELCA Youth Gathering is created to be. Each day there is an emphasis based on scripture and how it applies to the lives of young adults. Brave, free, authentic, disruptive. When I first saw that word, I thought, uh-oh, disruptive. But if you spend some time in the book of Acts, disruptive is a good way to describe God's people. When the word gets out that God is God, the Holy Spirit does disrupt our usual ways, challenges our priorities, confronts our prejudices, 
causes us to question where we find our worth and what power it is that we truly trust in. The spirit of wisdom, the life-giving force of justice, the love of God has been set free and, yes, will cause disruption. And for this, we praise God. As the world tries to destroy itself, we seek to imitate Jesus, to be a light, to be people of forgiveness, mercy, joy. Paul makes it to Corinth, and he puts down some roots here. He doesn't just stay for three weeks like he did in Thessalonica. He stays for 18 months. He stays with Jewish Christians Aquila and Priscilla, the first clergy couple. <laughs> they were tent makers, this husband and wife team that become the first church in Corinth. Paul sets up shop with them, making tents and telling people about Jesus. Paul accepts the hospitality of Priscilla and Aquila. We need one another. Together, they seek to build a church that is different from the culture around them, which was very divided based on people's standing, rank. Oops, McCormick's trying to help me. Thank you. Later, Paul has to write a letter to the church because they are taking on some of the values of the culture. This is a Dan Erlander drawing. When their celebration of communion became like other social gatherings, where the honorable wealthy had enough to eat, more than enough, and the humble poor were reminded of their shameful position. There were literally two tables. And Paul states that they are abusing the Lord's Supper when some go hungry and others become drunk. They are showing contempt for the church of God when they act like this. For communion is love. <laughs> eating and drinking the cup of Christ, eating the body, the bread, of Christ is to share the mystery of Christ, share the mystery of God who makes us one. It is the desire to be in the presence of one another and to see one another as equals in Christ. How are we disrupting the culture with the love of God? When a student chooses to welcome someone others exclude, the love of God is revealed. When you share your time to work at the food shelf or deliver meals on wheels or bring something to a neighbor who has been ill, the disruptive love of God is revealed. When you take a step back in a heated argument, and ask to continue the dialogue when conversation can replace yelling or threats, God is disrupting the culture. When you drive someone to worship or a doctor's appointment, when you listen to a story from a child or a frail elder, when you write a note and a prayer and mail it to someone who is living with grief or long-lasting illness, you reveal God. You disrupt the power of this world to push us down, to make us forget who we are in Christ. When you choose to serve on a ministry team here at church or be part of a needed community organization like the fire department or Kiwanis, you are choosing to share your time and to say that your community is worthy of your time of your best efforts, that you're choosing to see others as beloved of God. 
When you see someone at the grocery store or a baseball game, and you realize you haven't seen them in worship in a while, and so you reach out and say, is everything okay? Has something happened? I really miss seeing you at church in worship. And this comes out of a desire to be connected and to care, not out of judgment or disdain. When you take time after service to introduce yourself to someone that you see a lot, but you don't really know, rather than talking to the same people that you usually do, people that you already know, you are disrupting the norm, and you are showing the embrace of God. The life we share in Christ leads us to be disruptive because it leads us to love, to love without counting the cost, without wanting to get paid back in return. We get tangled up in the lives of others. It's a little bit messy sometimes, but it's surely more joyful. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God dwells, lives, abides in and through them. There's no fear in love. Love casts out the need to be in control, the need to know how it will all turn out. Love allows us to surrender our own expectations, which is not an easy thing. But Christ's love compels us to confess that on our own, we are lifeless. We are disconnected from the vine that is life. Why in God's name does our congregation exist? To live out the life of Jesus. That every person will know Jesus. To provide opportunities for that Holy Spirit to stir up, to bring people to closer relationship with Christ and with each other. That we would equip and teach our children and all who are open to God's disruption, to God's disruptive leading. That we would remember those three circles of Christ's mission, our home, our community, our world. And in this, God's dream comes true. We tell others in words, and deeds, how God suffered, outloved, outlived, even the worst that unjust, sinful humans can do. And we invite people to turn, to receive the gift of forgiveness, and become part of a community of the goodness of God, a contrast society, God's unusual people of abundance, grace, and love. Thanks be to God.
Our fourth graders are sharing their faith milestone today, which is the Ten Commandments. So we invite them to come on up. Thank you for being here today. So you'll, you can stand together and be a little bit close to that microphone so we can hear you. Tell people your name so they can know who you are. <laughs> you can start. <laughs> My name is Addie. My name is Addison. My name is Kalem. My name is Kale. Thank you. Thank you for being brave. We'll continue with the prayers. Thank you, fourth graders. Let us pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for those for the mission of the gospel. Keep all newly baptized and those for preparing for their affirmation of baptism in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us abide in you always. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things, for rivers and lakes, streams and polluted waters, renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. We pray for the well-being and safety of farmers and ranchers in this planting season. God of grace. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives of every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign. We lift up your care, the people of Israel, of Ukraine, South Sudan, Syria, Gaza, Israel, and those in need in our community. God of grace. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness, homelessness, unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all those who are ill or suffering, especially Todd, Dick, Linda, Joe, Brittany, Dennis, Steve, Donette, Jerry, Bill, Nevin, Shannon, Gladys, Jan, Dorothy, Jim, and Amy, God of grace. Hear our prayer. 
for this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world, God of grace. With thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us, like them, to bear much fruit and to become your disciples, and at last bring us to that heavenly banquet where we will all feast together at your table, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor. Thank you for noticing the announcements in the bulletin. Rick has a reminder about the Our Savior Cemetery annual meeting coming up. And we, the VBS registration is open. If you could sign up your child and invite a friend. And remember to be thinking about ways to help as well. I uh, just want to make an announcement about the Cemetery Association. I'm a board member of Our Savior's Lutheran Cemetery Association, and the Board of Directors reviewed the articles and bylaws of the association, and we decided that some of these no longer pertain to the way that the cemetery operates. The last time they were updated was back in 1969. <laughs> so uh, the board approved amending some of the articles and bylaws. There are copies of the amendments in the bullet, by the bullet, in the, on the bulletin board by the office door back here uh, for your review if you want to look at it to see what we've decided to amend. Uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors, I'm announcing a special meeting to ratify the board-approved amendments to the articles and bylaws of the association. All lot owners are eligible to vote at that meeting. Uh, the meeting will be May 15th at 6 p.m. at the church. And immediately following that, we'll have our annual meeting here, too. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Next Sunday, we have a special concert, Elliot and Mark, so think about being able to come to that. And then today, if you serve on a ministry team of any sort, we would love to have you at the Leaders Retreat. Uh, we're doing some relationship building things and some faith practices. It'll be a great time together. If you can only come for an hour and a half of it, that's, that's okay. It starts at 2. Um, any other announcements? And that, it's out at Good Earth in the Log Lodge, or in the Bar Lodge, in the Little Lodge. Okay, let's sing together, and thank you for your gifts of offering. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, 
These are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and song. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we greet Christ as he comes to us in the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed, right, our duty and our joy that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior, whose dying has destroyed death, whose rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all creatures, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. In the night of Christ's betrayal, he took bread. He gave thanks to God, broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and offered it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering Christ's love for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We pray for the gift of your spirit within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, God, through Jesus Christ, by your Spirit, in your church without end. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. Kingdom, and power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come, for all is ready. All are welcome. You may be seated. There is a, an invitation and instruction in your bulletin, and the ushers are here to help as well.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen you in your faith and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Kids, come on up and get an instrument as we sing our sending song, Let All Things Now Living. Thank you, band. Almighty God, bless and keep you now and forever. Go in peace to share the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen.